Okay, let's start recording. With YouTube, we're playing some Blood Red Elf Shadow today. Midway into my first game, I forgot to start it before we were playing. Oh, that's a, uh, that's bad. So I guess we know their hand, last, the last card in their hand is four. So I should have replicated this on the spot. Land, great. Okay, so do I attack? I'll probably attack. Cause like I do actually have to like win the game. And then hopefully we can just put enough pressure on our opponent. Play this. I should have attacked first. That was poor sequencing. Well, Blood Rails come out in this matchup. I'm going to bring in the three Battle Rages and the Radiant Flames. And, like, have you thought about doing any Legacy Cube drafts? I really haven't Archmage just because, like, everybody on Twitch is doing Legacy Cube drafts. I don't think I get any views. And I'm having a load of fun with this deck. I think that this deck is, like, I really think that this deck is insane. Don't top deck a company. Job jerk. We're just we're just attacking. We're not playing around the collective company. I don't I don't have enough time for that kind of shenanigans in my life. And like I'm just grinding. I think I'm up I think this week I'm almost up 150 tickets with this deck. Okay. So I think I'm just going to attack and hold up this Abrupt Decay for some instant speed shenanigans, because they easily could have a collected company. I guess they also could... They can just activate an Ormondal here, right? One, two, three, four, five. I guess I'll make them activate Ormondal, and then I'll kill this Devoted Druid. What can make you feel this way? My girl, my girl, my girl, talking about my girl. She's a berserker. And if my opponent double blocks this death shadow, then I'm going to let this occur. Okay. All right. Then we're going to let them activate their Ormondale, their Westvale Abbey. They rip the company. Show us the dog. Billy boy. Hey, hey. There he is. This is the stream mascot. If you subscribe to the channel, you get this new sick emote. That is all about the Philly boy. The old MTG Philly. This emote is gas. Okay. Um, so I actually have to kill... I'm just dead to this Ormondal. Five tap. So this is five and tap. So one, two, three... Four, five, six. Sacrifice five creatures. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I should have to kill this devoted, this, this thing here, but then I can just. <sighs> Dude, Philly is gas. I love this dog. Like. He literally is super chill, doesn't poop in the house, like, kind of chews things, but whatever, and, like, he comes to work with me. Like, he's so chill at 12 weeks old, I can take him to work with me. I think I'm just dead. My opponent lets this occur, because they can just sack their Ormondal and just come in at me. I needed a lightning bolt. I need one more removal spell. Okay. 
Flip that Ormondal, fam. That is exactly what is occurring. Sack these five. Put Sadness on the stack. Okay. Alright. So, we do the old swap a -roo, Cut all of our grindy stuff. For every piece of spot removal we got. Like, if it impacts the board, it's coming in. Okay. Um, probably cut some Inquisitions. Because the deck is so redundant that I just care about... Um, it's so redundant that I just care about thought seizing the collected companies, really. These stubborn denials are, like... I usually bring these in against elves, but I don't think I have enough space. I could cut a Tarmogoyf. And then have a Miser one. Maybe on the draw, I'll cut like some of these Abrupt Decays. They seem kind of slow. And then bring these Stubborn Denials in. I just don't really know what else I can cut. Like, I could cut a land. But I think I want all of this. Maybe I can cut like a Traverse. And a Tarmogoy from bringing two of these. Yeah, I can buy that. I could have got two Tarmogoyfs and left the Traverses in. Heater. We need a second land. We get a second land drop. Second fetch land. We got turn two double death shadow. We got a land on top of our deck. Oh, what would be better is if we had like four street rates, then a land on top of our deck. Okay, keep this. Get this one so the Traverse is a live draw. All right, so we're just going to take this Devoted Druid, push this thing off a cliff. If I draw a land, I could actually Brutality it, which would be nice. New standard card. Brian Kibler coming out of retirement. I am hyped about that. Sad. Land would have been insane. Philly, where are the lands? Philly, why you no know, give me the lands? You just troll me now, Philly? Philly, you're supposed to like hook me up here and find me some lands. Oh, what a tail. We just draw runner runner three lands. Two lands off the top. Now we can't win. We can kind of win. We're definitely just bing bing in that. But we're probably just going to actually duress it. Because then I'll figure out how to deal with these other cards later. Hey! 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 No! No! Don't chew that. So I could just merc this Ditch of Death Shadow. Bing bing. So I actually like, can't win if he collect accompanies me, more than likely. So escalate with two modes. Maybe I should have taken the Devoted Druid with my... I probably should have taken the Eternal Witness with my Thoughtseize. I'm going to ditch a Death Shadow. Is it freaking Scavenging Ooze? Jesus. At least the, El the Elvis Champion's beatable. The Renegade Leader and the Scavenging Ooze are not really beatable. I need a fetch land. Need a fetch land so that I can go traverse. Okay, that thing's we gotta we gotta get rid of that thing. God, the struggle. I'm gonna play this because this doesn't really do anything without more mana. And if he if he plays Elvis Champion and attacks me, I'm just I think I'm actually just gonna play Double Death Shadow. Get our race on. It was the heat of the moment. I'd really like to draw a land so that I could go like Death Shadow, Heritage Druid. God, my opponent is ripping like a champ. Nice. 
All right, Houston, we have a problem. We have a problem. That's like not bad. It's not good. So what do I have to kill? Do I have to kill this? The problem is my garage charm doesn't do anything. I think I've actually got to kill this thing. One, two, three, four, five. And like, even if they get the scavenging who's in the plate, they can't overrun and do any damage to me. And then we hopefully can Golgari charm away some stuff. Don't draw a lord. Like, just one time. One time, no lord. Play play another heritage druid. Speak whatever. The scavenging is bad. You don't want to play that. Philly, he doesn't want to play the scavenging. We know he doesn't want to play the scavenging moves, right, buddy? No, Dad. We don't want to play the scavenging moves. We don't. I love pretending that I'm in the dog's brain and, like, speaking. Like, I, w I wish I could narrate his life. So, Dad, why do you suck at magic? Feed me. So now are we entering, like, the Ormondal aspect of this game? I actually wouldn't mind if my opponent holds up Ormondal. Because Cavern Souls creature ooze. What the fuck? You just want to leave max green sources open? Okay. I wonder if there's a world where I can just absolutely blow my opponent out here with this Golgari charm. It's round time. So if I attack, he's going to block to regenerate all of his elves. He just goes like here, here. He can just go eat, eat. All right, well, we're like, we're like not a winning, not winning, not attacking. So let's see what our opponent does. They could just block and regenerate. They can do that anyways. And maybe they do something like, I could easily just Golgari Charm before damage, before blockers to get in there with his Tarmogoyf. But I think I'd like to hope my opponent does something cute so that I can win this game. Because I just don't really anticipate being able to win. Unless my opponent, like, freaks up. Because we, we can't get these Death Shadows into play. But I kind of want my opponent to attack me next turn. And, like, this does not make sense on the board. But I guess you can just get blocked with the Scavenging News. Eat one, two. Oh, yeah, this was all not good. Okay, he regenerates. I'll go Gari Charm and then get on with my life. This scavenging news is going to kill us. There's just no other way to fix this. All right, we're just going to go like this. And, like, I could have done this before combat. I could see that, but I wanted to figure out something. I think I'm so far behind <laughs> that I want to do something that gets me, like, give my opponent the chance to frig this up. Because in a perfect world, this also incentivizes my opponent to attack me. If my opponent attacks me, I can at least get some Death Shadows into play. This is, is more scavenging use fodder. Hey! To your... I don't understand. I get you all these nice toys. Spend all that shit little money on you. And then you eat our other stuff. Eat your toy. There you go. Nice job. All right. That's kind of what we need. Our opponent eats two creatures. So eight, ten, we go to five. Then we play a Death Shadow that's like larger than this thing. Oh, they just take it. Okay, that's fine too. God, the savageness. Now I have to like hit a black source to Thought Seize and play Death Shadow now. Block, take five. Whatever, I'm just going to play this Death Shadow and then hope that I hit a red source so that I can company, so that I can battle rage my opponent out of this game. 
I would need to do exactly 24 damage. But you never know. We just fell too far behind in this game, I think, in order to get it. Like, I could thought seize that, but it's time to play to win. All right, opponent does not play into it. Now they're just going to try to Ormond all me. Boom, 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 boom. So they don't, if they don't find a way to produce mana, they can't Omen on me. Which could, like, theoretically get me another turn. There you go, buddy. He is showing that taco toy who is boss. Okay, so... He can Omen on me now if he goes for it, which he probably will. It's like, I only have green up. So, like, what am I... How am I going to deal with this? Come on, show me the goods, opponent. Heritage Druid. I guess that isn't, that's fine, too. It just adds more. Four. Probably sacks everything. Or you just, like, overrun with a Zuri for 40 million points. I, can, I might actually be able to beat an Azuri overrun. If I can beat an Azuri overrun and still fetch Shock for a Battle Rage is another question. I probably should just make Omen Doll. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Concede confirmation. Yeah. We lost the Elves deck. Which that'll happen. I don't think Elves is a very good matchup for... I don't think Elves is a very good matchup for any Black Green deck. It's, it feels like... It feels like Sweeper or Bust. 35 viewers, I hope everyone's having a great morning as we spring ahead this morning. My name is Dylan Hubby, one on my stream. I appreciate y'all for being here. Let's see if I missed any cool stuff here. Here we are in the chat still, what do we got? We got Vala Hoskin, Velcram, Sky Jeffrey, Neens, more Jeff. If you're all in the chat, I appreciate you. I keep my Twitch alert volume down because it messes with my YouTube. Right, I would like to play first. This hand is good, not great. We're going to keep this. I'm going to fetch. We're going to keep this because we can go discard spell into Liliana. And we're going to fetch before we discard spell and before we shoot raid. Look at that, buddy. There's a new black lap dog down there. So, fuck that guy. We're going to fetch Blood Crypt because we have two different lands we could hit, or two different important spells that we could hit off this. want to. Okay, that's not bad. Faithless looting. We're playing against Dredge. Oh, okay. Uh, what are we doing? We're playing against... Oh, so this is What's-His-Name's deck. Alright, I'm just going to take their Thoughtseize. This is Decandio's deck here. This will be interesting. Take this Thoughtseize so that hopefully I can edict this Grimflare and then just try to figure out what's going on with this Blood Raid Elf. Okay, that's a uh, Blood Raid Elf on my own. Hey! No. Show your toys. What the fuck? What the fuck, Billy? What the fuck? But Danny, I want you to. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Okay, so he looting's away lingering souls and architects will, so I know his hand. Oh, that's nice. We can play we can play our own little shadow boy. 
Unfortunately, I can't fetch because I draw, drew both my overgrown tombs. So I can't traverse as well. So let me go get this watery grave. That's so annoying. We'll go like this. Leave up stubborn denial, get a little bit of, put the fear of God into him. Hey, 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 Philly boy. Play Grim Flare. Don't flashback Lingering Souls, for the love of Christ. Don't play Lingering Souls. That was the Wooded Foothills. You know you want to play that Grim Flare. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. All right, well, we are going to be able to play a good long game. We're going to have to protect our life total. So, like, next turn, we probably just traverse for two Bloodbraid Elves. And then we just cast Bloodbraid Elf for the rest of the game. This looting is gone. One, two, this Grim Flare is gone. So, I know one, two, three, four cards in their hand. It was the heat of the moment. Tell me we want to Sweet. Ooh. Stop that. Stop that. So I think I'm actually just going to play Tarmo Life Traverse for Blood Red Elf and not do anything by Liliana. Because I want to keep all of my cards. Though I'm not doing anything with my Liliana. My whole turn next turn is like play Blood Red Elf. Alternatively, I can just traverse for a Death Shadow and then hold this. No, I'm just going to traverse for two Death Shadows. Let's let's make the plays here. Whatever, we don't need that BBE. We are going to get underneath this. We're just going to lay the beats. And I think I want to keep my Tarmogoyd, so I'm not going to tick my Liliana up. Because he more than likely just... Trades like a stomping round. He's like Maelstrom Pulse, joke's on you. Forest, okay. Young Peasy. So I know all of the last three cards they have. It's Bloodbred Elf and Bedlam Revler. What? Oh, there's a stomping round, okay. Houston, we can't win. Okay, now I gotta do me some thinking. That's gas. So we're gonna take up on this pyro. My opponent, Bloodbraid Elves, probably killing this. Though I can go block, block, and if he doesn't, um,. If he doesn't find a way to deal direct damage or remove a Bloodbraid Elf off of this, off this Bloodbraid Elf, then it, we're going to be in good shape. I could have put the squeeze on my opponent. Maybe I should have attacked with both of my shadows. But like next turn, I think I'm probably just like attacking, minusing this. Getting back another Death Shadow. Are we reveling? Are we Bloodbraid Elf? Okay. Show me the good, sir. It'll push, okay. So they can't get my Liliana off the table, but they are gonna be able to reveler me. All right, so let's ask the real questions. Am I ticking this up to start picking off these Lingering Souls tokens? Let's go, I think I'm attacking. Because attack, get rid of one of these. Roll down, get another Death Shadow back. Play a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I think I'm attacking. How much does Reveler cost? One, two, three, four. So it costs four. Okay, we're coming in, we're coming in hot. Opponent probably chumps. They should chump with an Elemental. They should keep their spirits around. So now I'm tempted to just take up on this spirit now. 
and play Tunnel Wave. Yeah, we're just gonna chew through these things. If they would have attacked with a, um, if they had blocked with a spirit, I would have rolled down because I could have had two blockers. All right, so this Bedlam Reveler costs four. One, two, three, four. And now, now they're like double abyss, which is sweet. So like, if they play this Battle Brother and don't add to the board, I'm just gonna tick up and attack with both of my creatures. 50 viewers, I hope everyone's having a great, great day. Wow, they shot, holy shit. I guess they're leaving themselves up the most mana. And they're already in the abyss. Okay, so they draw three. Get that recall on. Hey, Philly. Hey. What a little stinker you are. You're so cute when you get outside and everybody looks at you. Then you come in here. You're just like, I am a monster. Hey. No. No chewing the chair. You're literally looking at your toy. I have the cutest dog ever. Little monster, though. I think we're in a pretty good spot here because we're going to ditch his two thoughts because we're going to just we're going to wrath our opponent's board. And I think I'm going to fetch. No, I'm not. We're just going to hold this in case my opponent has any shenanigans. Can attack. We can attack. He should attack. Should attack this because he's already. Yeah. Good play. Good play, opponent. Now I'm going to leave this so we have a bolt. So I'm going to attack before I use my Liliana because if they have a removal spell, I'm probably going to want to roll this back. All right, so let's go. Let's get this guy off the battlefield. Let's crack in. So yeah, they have a removal spell. Push something, chump block. Okay. All right. So against this deck, I don't want Lily on the veil because on the draw at least I can bring it in on the play. I want my K command. I want this. Probably want this Golgari charm. Fatal push, and like maybe these brutalities. I like brutality a lot against like lingering souls and young pyromancer decks because you can actually kill the creatures and gain a little bit of life, which is important. But I don't have that many cards to bring out, so like it's probably stay and put. Probably can cut two street rays, protect my life total. Uh, maybe cut an Inquisition, and I'll bring in like one more brutality. No, nah, that just that just seems pretty mopey. I could maybe cut some discard on the play, but I think this is what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go to Grind Town, Population, D Hub three one seven. And this is why this deck is insane, because you can like sideboard into this linear deck, and then you can sideboard a deck that probably is going to go over the top of your opponent. Though if my opponent begins to chain, but like chain whatever they are, battle marvelers and like whatever, I'm dead as a doorknob. I do want to play this list. I think that it's a little misbuilt. Like I saw the candy. We're gonna keep this because these are if they have to be lay of the lamb, they lay of the lamb. I think his list is a little misbuilt because. He, mul he doesn't go hard enough on Delirium to play Traverse, in my opinion. There it is. We're going to discard Spell on one, because if like we're most likely going to turn one of these into Lay of the Land, but I hope that the other one doesn't become it. And I would like to be able to take something. That's pretty good. Um, This gets Blood Crypt. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? Hazret. Hazret the Fervent, you don't say. I think I'm going to take this Hazret. I can deal with this Young Pyromancer. The Lingering Souls are going to be annoying. 
as Lingering Souls always is. Yeah, I mean, Decandio is a, a great Magic player. I think that his deck is a little misbuilt. Wait on the IQ to start? What are you playing? You playing Jund? You bobble himself. Okay. They draw. Okay, so I think I'm actually just gonna go like this, push this, and then pass. Probably get this tapped, get stomping ground. I let Drago use Bubbles. You're playing Jeskai. Are you playing Nicolich's deck? Or are you playing the Spellcaller version? So my opponent gets a pretty great turn next turn as I get to push and flashback a Lingering Souls. But I don't think there's much way. Oh, okay, now we can take the Fatal Push. So this Lingering Souls is gone. They have Double Mountain. They have a Spell Bomb. It's pretty annoying. Or at least we get to beat down with this Goyf. And we'll probably K command to kill a spirit and then make them discard a card because they have a spell because they have the spell bomb I doubt is gonna do much more. I played similar to Ben's, except lots of burn like sideboard. I saw like Abram plays. That's good. Yeah, I mean Ben's deck is Ben I like Ben's deck. I think it's like it's probably the best Jace deck that I've seen. Besides, I like your blue-red disrupting shoal Jace deck. I was kind of a fan of that. But I like how Ben's deck is like all little dirtily spells and Snapcaster Mages and then like Jaces. He doesn't play like Cryptic Command. He plays, at least I don't think, he may play like one Cryptic Command, but he played a bunch of uh, Supreme Verdict as well. Is the shop streaming the, uh, the event, Johnny? So now I can actually Shatter Shock or Shatter Discard, which is kind of nice. Hopefully get a relevant card. Alright, I mean we're gonna be able to we're gonna be able to grind through these lingering souls, but I formed one with Jeskai, but I couldn't find another Rude Hanger and he plays two cricket. Not the shop at all. It does seem like kind of an obscure card. I'm gonna wait till my opponent attacks because I'm gonna wanna cake him in a Bloodbraid Elf. I'm like kind of not really winning this race. Kind of. Like, winning this race, they don't draw anything. These traverses are garbage. I have one, two. I also think this deck is misbuilt, that they should just. This deck should be jamming Manamorphos. Like, he should cut like some of his shenanigans, like Grim Flare's shenanigans, I think, in this deck. Maybe you don't need all of these Lingering Souls in your main deck because you're playing like a Traverse Beatdown deck. So maybe you only need like one or two of these in the main deck. He discards Faithless Looting and Wooded Foothills. All right, let him take a card. I'm going to wait to see how he attacks. Alright, well now I'm just going to keep my life total high. This game's going to go on for a while. And he can block anyways. We got an Abrupt Decay out of him. Nice. Alright, we're going to lay some land. Do the swamp. Yeah, this Decandio played this yesterday on the um, on on stream there. Oh, I should actually plug in here. I haven't been plugged in. I've been on my I've been streaming on my Wi-Fi, which is kind of gas. Internet's great, but I should plug in now. While I can.
Make it so my stream doesn't die. Ow. So like Blood Bright Elf would suck from my opponent, but like my opponent Oh, they hit a Reveler? No, they're there. Okay. And that's like we're just this is so awesome because this is supposed to be like a really shitty matchup for us. Like anything with lingering souls. And we're just bodying our opponent. Traverse. They're probably gonna get their own elf. He probably could get a Bedlam Reveler to just fuel up. He's got one, two, three, four card. Now nah, he should get a Blood Brain Elf. No. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? You being a piss ant? Bedlam Reveler, okay. So if my opponent attacks with. Traverse, sad. I'm gonna leave that in my hand to discard or something. My opponent just chumps, then they have to block both creatures next turn or they die. <clears throat> and that was one of the poor hits, you know, like we, we got spell bombed, like the game is going to get difficult, but had we not been, they didn't have the spell bomb, then that would have been another Blood Dream, which would have been sick. Such is life. I hope everyone's having a good day. Just hanging out with the old Chatteruski. Hey buddy. This will probably be my last league of the day. I gotta go get, burn some energy with the pup. At some point. Play your Reveler, dude. It does cost a lot. Mistress Bottle. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he cracks the bottle. Grim Flare, okay. If I find a removal spell. Okay, so what happens if I attack with both of my creatures? He probably goes chump, then he goes block. Then I bolt, finish off either the Grim Flare or the Bedlam Reveler and then play another Tomagoyf. Yeah. We only have one more K command. He goes chump, eat. We finish it off, play a goif. We're one more card type from Delirium. <clears throat> he probably should block with Grim with Bedlam Reveler because Grim Flare has a lot more value than Bedlam Reveler now that it's in play. Also, if you get Bedlam Reveler into the graveyard somehow, then you can K command it back. This is going on the Tarnal Life. This should be like non-negotiable right here. And I think this should go here. Unless he has enough spells to maybe kill me. And then you can kind of, like that, that's a little bold. But I think I think the best block is Spirit Goyf, Battle Reveler, Blood Red Elf. You can't beat Battle Rage, no matter what. Oh wow, he's gonna try to get this guy off the board. All right, so we get Everything. So I'm gonna kill this, kill the, then finish that off with a lightning bolt. I'm gonna guess that my opponent's hand is very good after this attack, this block. Play that. Now, if we draw a fetch land, we can actually fetch a tap land and then go get a blood right elf. Or if we draw a bobble. So we need like fetch land, bobble, fetch land or bobble gets us. Okay, push his goif. Show me a bobble. This is a lingering souls. That's pretty bad. Another bedlam reveler is also not good. Our opponent is, they're just slowly going ahead. They ditched an elf and a fatal push. 
What? You get a Bloodbred Elf and a Fatal Push. That seemed odd. Maybe they don't have another basic they don't want to take damage off of that fetch land. And like, you kind of have to get Tarmog Wife off the board or the Bloodbred Elf or the Reveler just trades for it. All right, I got one more Bolt in my deck, I think. Yeah. This is dead. Oh, that was a good draw. That was a good, that was a good one. So we've got one more Bloodbraid Elf. We have three more Bloodbraid Elves. Okay, yeah, we have three more Bloodbraid Elves for great draws. That's a pretty good draw. The problem is he can just like looting. He's got three lootings, it looks like, two lootings. It's pretty mana intensive, but he can easily go like looting, flashback, lingering souls. If my opponent like plays in flashbacks on Green Souls, I'm in a lot of trouble. Traverse for an elf. Nope. Traverse for another bedlam leveler. How many revelers do you got, man? I think this game is slipping away. That spell bomb was such such big game for my opponent. Bedlam Reveler, yep. Ditches another Traverse. Okay. Mana base in this deck looks a little awkward. It's pyro. Tilt. Do I even play this? Block, block. I guess I play this and I attack with my Death Shadow to force a trade here. And if my opponent, but then it's only seven, so I can only kill one and I lose my Death Shadow. Yeah, that sucks. Alternatively, if I attack with both, if I attack with both of these, then I can get, he goes block here, double block here. And that leaves him with just a Bedlam Reveler with like a lot of Faithless Lootings, like a, quite a bit of damage. But I think I'm okay with that. So I'm basically trading Death Shadow, Be Blood Bright Elf for Pyromancer, Bedlam Reveler, leaving my opponent with a Bedlam Reveler and two cards, but I don't want two Bedlam Revelers in play because if they find a removal spell, then it doesn't take a lot for my opponent to kill me. Oh, that was so stupid. I didn't even think about this block. Well, what? They're just tossing a Bedlam Reveler under the bus. Well, they probably easily can kill me from now. Yeah, I didn't even think about this block. Because, like, I thought that he would take the opportunity to get the Death Shadow off the board. But didn't want to do that. So he's got five points. He can cast four spells or a Lightning Bolt and kill me. Okay. So it needs a lightning bolt or two more spells. Black, black. Flash it back. All right. So now we're in that Golgari charm. Turn off auto yields. Now we need our Golgari charm, or we are dead as a doorknob. Now nah, he killed your guy with the push. I don't know what your what your reference in rotten. Flare. If he attacks, we just need Golgari Charm. We can traverse for a Bloodbright Elf and then find it. So I'm actually going to fetch. Because we're dead next turn anyways. Does this turn off my fetch land? This is seven. No. We don't have Battle Rage in our deck. So now we've got... We've got one, two, three, four, five. Like we have one out, four maybe outs. I should have grabbed the watery grave to make it so like he thought that I blew in my deck. Nope. Game three. Oh, that was tight. Okay. 
So on the play, do I want to bring in any number of collective brutalities? I probably want to bring in my Liliana the Veils on the play. Because I can Edict a Flare or a Two Drop. I'm going to cut my brutalities. 55 viewers. I hope everyone's having a great start to their Sunday. I'm still waking up. Get my stretch on. <clears throat> All right, there's our Golgari charm. Probably gonna get Thought Seized away if I had to guess, but you can't mulligan this hand. It's, you don't definitely don't want to mulligan in this matchup at all. Any resource-based matchup, as long as your hand is playable, you keep it. This hand's pretty playable. And we're gonna bobble, scry bobble on their turn because we don't want to give them another card to look at with a Thought Seize. It is gonna kind of suck. If they take this goal, this, this charm. I'm really big on Golgari Charm right now. I think there's a lot of high impact enchantments from the blue white decks, from Ad Nauseum. Um, this helps you beat Supreme Verdict, which is important. The, the Storm decks are playing Pyromancer's Ascension now. Yeah, this is definitely. Oh, no, they're traversing. A little lay of the land action. Mountain. Okay. Bloodbraid Elf. I don't think we want another Bloodbraid Elf. We need to get... We need. We don't have enough mana for the first one. Street Wraith in the fetch land would be sweet. Fatal Push is not bad. Traverse is also not bad. So I'm not going to Traverse now because I would rather hopefully naturally hit my land drops. I will traverse for a land next turn in order to not miss one. But I would like it to be like be more. I don't want to piss away a resource in this matchup, which is like th this is a creature, you know? My opponent can probably get away with that a little more than I can because they have lingering souls. All right, so now we traverse. We find a forest. Because we have double black. And this is, we're definitely in the stage where if we Blood Bright Elf into a Death Shadow, it's not good, which is like a deck building constraint, but we're not just not going to cast Blood Bright Elf. Hopefully we hit a land drop and it's a fetch land. My opponent just plays Lingering Souls. What is this? Is a Colorgon's Command? Who's not doing anything? We're not doing anything either, but we're just going to have like an Elf off. Okay, so that's great. So now our only bad hit is Traverse or Fatal Push, but we are just going to cast it. Kologon's Command wouldn't be great as it's just like a shock. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? All right, yeah, that was one of our, that was one of our bad ones. Should have left it in my deck. That was a mistake because it can turn into more Blood Red Elves. So I should have left that one in my deck. That was, I punted there. That was not good. So we're getting in here. My opponent's probably gonna Blood Braid Elf me this turn, but next turn I can go Blood Braid Elf. Actually, no, because like now I can go Blood Braid Elf and Death Shadow next turn. So like Lay of the Land isn't great, but it is something. Crack Core artwork was not the way to go. Really, so you won't cascade into one because you have two in the hand. Yep, Rotten Pine there. Why no Radiant Flames or Soul Swords or Pyromancers? Because I would rather play a Death Shadow. I would rather play like a grindy game, and you can't really have Radiant Flames in with this. Now, if... How, how do I say this? If this deck becomes more prominent, I will switch my Radiant Flames to like Kozlek's Return. But I like how Radiant Flames is the third power and is easy on the mana. It does kind of suck that we are casting Blood Red Elves into open boards. So now we have a Traverse. Now our Traverse is online. <laughs> but um, hopefully it will clean out for the more fruitful. Yes. What do we get? Fatal push? Nope. Our elves betrayed us. And maybe I should have just gone double death shadow. Probably like probably the adult move would have been to play two death shadows. 
going down to seven because it's going to take three bolts for them to kill me. No, I should have just... That was stupid. I should have just played... Yeah, because now three bolts kill me. That was dumb. I should have just played basic swamp, and if they bolt my swamp, I'm like, that's, that's life. Okay. And if they lingering souls me, we'll just Golgari charm them out of there, out of this, out of this world. Get on my face. I have six. Realistically, you won't cascade. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. What do we got going on here? There's a Bedlam Reveler. Bedlam Reveler would cost five. No, it's their own elf. Oh, it's Maelstrom Balls. Okay. That's a good draw. All right. Well, we are running out of resources. Bing, bing. I'm going to play this so I can have two pushes up and a Galari Charm. I'm getting a little nervous now. They have six cards in their hand. means they definitely have an answer to this. Oh no, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. What did they have? They must have like, but they, they had opportunities to fetch to set up Lingering Souls. So they don't have Lingering Souls in their hand. And I cast Elf under an open board, which is a mistake. Last, the, the, the second Elf should have been two Death Shadows. Should not have played the, the elf there. That was that was an F up on my part. No reason to play it. Mount side of me and then you just Okay. That makes sense, Swag Hood. Swag Hood? Swag Hood MTG? If I can get that right. Okay, so this is dead as a doorknob. That's pretty good. Because they don't have Lingering Souls, so that Liliana actually should be able to, like, do some work. Okay. Now, the big question is, what am I discarding? So we know, we know like, for a fact we're playing this. And I think I'm discarding the Fatal Push. Because we have, like, a single creature covered with this Liliana. We're worried about like young pyro into tokens. We're not worried about what do we got here? There's a grim flare. Yeah. We're we're worried about like lingering souls and tokens. That is what we are afraid of. <sighs> also, if you were still getting two for one for pulse, the next PvE you would cast would be an magical or the goddess now. So you would have lost both the shadows anyways. Versus two. Yeah. Okay, you, you do you do make some sense there. Okay. So I can Golgari Charm here to trade with the Bloodbright Elf next turn. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. All creatures get minus one, minus one. <coughs> and if we don't draw anything, we can just edict this away. We didn't draw anything. I think I'm casting. Probably just casting that. Hopefully we don't hit Lingering Souls. Bedlam Reveler. Gross. Because now they're going to be able to go Reveler. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can Reveler and Flashback Lingering Souls. How do we win? I go like Bloodbraid Elf into Liliana the Last Hope. And like hope my opponent doesn't have anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean this deck, like we let's see what we got here. Alright, let's cast see what they're drawing. Take one more draw step. They're playing a Grim Flare. Gross. Yeah. Well, so I think we would have like and obviously, we spun the wheel with Bloodbred Elves, and we didn't hit very well with our Bloodbred Elves. If we do play, if we hit well with our Elves, then I think we're in that game. 
I think we probably win that game if we hit well with our elves, you know? But that's a deck, if that deck becomes good, then I will want to change these Radiant Flames into something like Kozlex Returns, or maybe add a Mountain to my main deck and play Anger of the Gods. But I don't think that I want, like, that, that'll be a little change, but... Yeah, my lady didn't do it well for me. I also think that that deck is like, I think his deck, I think his deck's built too greedy in my opinion. I think he wants, that deck wants something like more bobbles or more faithless lootings or metamorphoses. That deck probably also like folds. I mean, we fold to a spell bomb as well. That's what happened in game two. If we hadn't been spell bombed, we'd have ran him out of the, ran him out of the gym. I'm going to get some more Kofefe. Fair bit of filtering there. I think you want more bobbles though, because bobble is free and it helps you turn on, it makes you so like traverse is again, because this card is disgust. this card's terrible if it's not, if it's not active. So like you do, I think you want to, if you're going to play traverse, you want to devote to it. And I think the best way, if you're not going to play street rate, I think you need to play three bobbles or four bobbles. How's the record going? I was in the shower. We're 0-2 we're in this league. I think that I won before today, before this league actually, I think I was I was 22-3 and three over my last five leagues. But I've been running train in this deck here. With my losses being to like blue-white control. Can't beat blue-white control. Lost to elves, yes. Lost to elves and lost to this deck. Good matchup. Good, good game against this deck too. But I really think there's something here with this deck. I think that I don't know how to build it. I don't know if these should be in the main deck and the Battle Rages should be in the main deck and you should be like a more grindy deck or more explosive Death Shadow deck or if you want to go bigger with the Bloodbright Elves. And I don't know if I want the Mountain. I think I would have had a chance against the Blue White Control deck if I had the Mountain. Iron Man is burn, baby burn. We're a pretty we're dogging against burn in game one also. How's the Jun matchup? So the Jun matchup is is awkward because like I find myself oh yeah we don't have any way to deal with this thing. I find myself one two three four five we don't have to discard which is great maybe I should have discarded. I find myself um the biggest way that I lose to Jun is when they do too much direct damage to myself, to me with Lightning Bolt. That's just the best way to lose that matchup, I think. Jesus. Okay, so let's look on top of our deck, see what's there. It's a bottle. So I'm gonna fetch this tapped. Because like, so, when you're playing against regular Jund, like, the, like, Jund is a better Bloodbright Elf deck than this deck. I don't, I'm not going to deny that. They, they just have more impact spells, more... Oh, that's gross. So we draw the Wraith. How do I win? I just like don't probably, um, like Jun's a better Bloodbraid Elf deck, but the rest of your fifty six cards are better than Jun's fifty six cards. Like your deck is better than your your the average card in your deck is better than Jun's deck, than the average card in Jun's deck, and Jun's yeah, if I'm saying that right, 
I'm going to fetch a tapped red land. If my opponent wants to take this opportunity to start flinging off some lightning bolts, then like such is life. But I do think that you can you can at least hang with the deck. Um, probably should just traverse for a forest. Play my forest, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna attack with the shadow. Like I'm not, and then play a Tarn away. If I'm not gonna win this game by playing defense, yes, and that's what I'm saying. Like your deck is. The average creature, the average card in your deck is better than Jun's deck. Like, that's why Jun was, Jun's literally, um, they know I have a Street Wraith. Do I just take this? I think I cycle my Street Wraith. It, it easily could get me killed, but I need to, I need to do something. Um, this deck is, this deck was great without Bloodbright Elf, and... The fact that you can put Bloodbright Elf in the format. I should have traversed another Death Shadow there. That was a mistake. Okay. Show me a spell. I punted here. I should have traversed for a Shadow. Yep. Pit and Go. Pit and Go. I, I, I recognize that name. But we, we have some serious burn game after sideboard. So we've got these. We have these. We don't want any of our grindy cards. We want to ditch the Elves. Ditch the commands, ditch the last hope, cut two street wraiths, probably cut two thought seizes. And now, like, we have four brutalities, three battle rages, and four stops after sideboard. Yeah, burn is miserable. But we should have some game now. Like, we just have a lot. Like, like this right here, this is just like, this is gas right here. Yeah, I'm thinking that I've got some serious game now. I also, the best way to lose to Jund is like not kill Dark Confidant. Uh, this is kind of gross, but I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna bobble myself on turn one. Because if there's a land on top, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to try to stub their first play. Or push their first play. Because it's pretty important to get Tarmogoyf down. If I want to shuffle... Yeah, I want to shuffle. So I'm actually just going to ditch on this Stubborn Denial. Because I want to be able to make it so Traverse is a live draw off the top of my deck. This hand's gas, though. We have a little bit of everything. We do need to hit land. A lot of creatures. One, two. So I actually think I want to take a creature. And I'm going to take a one mana creature here. We want to see a land off the top. Land off the top, and then I'm going to get play Tongue Wolf. Aaron Mesa. Here comes Monastery Swift Spear. Similar game plan to what you're doing, just trying to control the board more since I don't have time to. Yes, yep. And Jund is a great deck. Like I'm not gonna sit here and poo-poo on it. It was it was okay, so that's gas. So do I shock myself and play Tarn Wife? Probably. This stubborn denial represents a card out of my opponent's hand, which is three damage. And if my opponent so I'm gonna block. And actually, if my opponent tries to bolt the Tarn Wife, it grows. I took that because uh, I took Eidolon. I took Swift Spear because they were land light, and it's just taking another one mana spell out of my opponent's hand. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna three mode this probably. I might just actually push this attack and hold up Stubborn Denial. Here comes the Eidolon. Okay. So if I go push, if I just go two mode, what happens if I go two mode, not gaining any life? Go 10, ditch a fatal push, fatal push this, have a stubborn denial. It's just like absolutely wrong to not three mode this every single chance you get, right? 
But I think I'm gonna two mode it because I wanna I wanna keep one fatal push for this and then a stubborn denial. Minus two, minus two. Yeah, that's what I think. Choose this. This makes my timer life huge. And then I'm gonna take one of their one mana spells to choke their hand up. So this makes my Goyf a six seven, which is these. My opponent's probably like scared because I didn't, I didn't uh, pump this up. Jeez, that's a lot of gas. So the Boros Charm is their entire turn. So I think I'm gonna take a Lightning Bolt. They sus they're probably gonna suspend. I'm gonna attack. They're probably gonna suspend a Rift Bolt. If they suspend a Rift Bolt, I get to push this, and then I get to untap with Stubborn Denial up. And if they Boros Charm me, like I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I'll be willing to take one damage and two damage. Like if they go to Boros Charm me, if they just suspend Rift Bolt, then I'll push this. The Lava Mancer is annoying. We've kind of given up on Battle Rage, which is like, could be scary. They scared. So I'm gonna take this and stub whatever they do. I would assume they're going to go double, double one drop. And then they go double one drop, I'll push this. Lava Man. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna push the Lava Mancer so that it can't block my Tower Life. Oh, that was dumb, because now they have, they have to invest mana into this in order to make it work, which was stupid. And it, like, just chokes their hand. It does buy them another turn. So, like, they have to kill me next turn, basically, is what we're putting them in the position to, where it's, like, it's like next turn or bust. And it's going to be difficult for them to kill me. Like, they would need bolt, bolt off the top, basically. They need perfect, perfect, because I can stub one thing. Okay. That's at least, I'm gonna play that because it lets me fetch a black land. So like they need Bolt Bolt to kill me. They need perfects. But. This gives me red mana for Battle Rage if we need it. So we're gonna let this one resolve. Puts me to six. I counter their next spell, unless it's double. We lose to we lose to the we lose to the, the nine. Okay, so now we're good. Unless they play a blocker. Get that weak shit out of here. Alright. And brutality on the way. Whew, that was tight. That was tight as a tick. On the draw, do I want more thought seizes? Do I want do I want to just like cut these Lilianas on the draw as they're kind of slow? Though if the games do slow down against burn, I could just cut these street raids and then play these thought seizes. Because at least thought seize deal both of them deal me two damage, but at least this trades with something. The street raid doesn't. Yeah, I think I want I think I want this. I just need to interact on one, I think, in order to have a good shot here. But if I'm doing this, I can just cut a Traverse, probably. Is there a card in my in here that's better than a Traverse? Because Traverse is probably going to be a little slow without the Street Wraiths. So do I want anything else in here that's over a Traverse? Or either of these cards better than Traverse? The only one that really comes to mind is like G-Charm. Because G-Charm kills Eidolon and it kills whatever the moron is. 
Um, Grim Lava Man. Yeah, I'm gonna cut a Traverse because the Traverses just aren't gonna be online without Street Wraith, and I'll bring in another piece of no action. Well, he's not dumb. He was just making like he was making a play that he probably couldn't beat. Like he could have, he could have stu he could have attacked me first. This hand is gas. We might just give up on the Tarmaloif and just fetch like um, Watery Grave Blood Crypt. No, we have two. Let's no, let's be adults. We have two removal spells here. We're gonna play. We're gonna go get Watery Grave and Stomping Ground. Collective brutality. Probably gonna stub whatever my opponent plays here, because I just want to be able to use my mana effectively. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So now we can fetch what I wanted to here. So how much damage do I take? We're probably just like going super aggro. So like Watery Grave, Shock. This goes and gets Blood Crypt. I'm definitely not putting as much thought into this as I should, but my I would be willing to bet even if I thought this out, my gut would say that it's it's fucking go time. We aren't we're we're not playing that slow game here. I actually don't think I'm gonna stub a burn spell. Lava man. Okay. Alright, so here comes the big questions here. If I serve in with Death Shadow for six, I go to seven. Okay. I play Tarmogoyf, hold up stub. My Tarmogoyf is little, so I'm not blocking any of these. So if my opponent, I am going to block. So let's say my opponent attacks. Okay. Play Tarmogoyf. I probably block the Swift Spear or one of these two. If a, if a spell comes through, Block here, take five. I think I'm just shocking and attacking and then playing a Tarmal Wife and holding up Stubborn Denial. Right, because there's no way they can do seven damage to me unless block, bolt, bolt six, bolt three, stub one of them six, block here, block here, take Two, take one, take one, two, three, four, six, four, seven at two. Then I'm at seven. So if I if I play my Tarmogoyf, if I shock and they have two one mana burn spells, they kill me. So then do I hold back my Death Shadow? Right, seven. Or if I just block this, actually, if I block this, then I take seven, four, let one resolve go to one, stub the other one. Yeah, okay. So I just had to block this Swift Spear. Because how they beat me is they beat me with two one mana burn spells. Yeah. Okay, that's good for the home team. We were just playing out all of our scenarios. Uh, resolves, right? Fetch land, three, fetch land, put me, shock me. Yeah, that's good.
So now I just shock myself. I can clear a blocker, which I should probably should just do for good measure. I don't think this matters. All right. I don't know if I'd have won that match. It would have been interesting to see if my opponent drew. I, I enjoy playing against Burn when I play with Death Shadow. Oh, shoot. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button there. That's the best way for people to see my stuff, and it's free. Another thing you can do that's free that's awesome is just check out my YouTube channel. It's linked below. There's lots of Death Shadow stuff. I play a lot of Modern. Um, working up to being able to play Jund. I want to do. I do want to play Jund. I want to give it a shot there because I think it's probably. I think this might actually be the best deck in the format, but I think Jund is very good as well. Um, what else was I gonna say? Um, if you need any Magic Online needs, you should check out Card Hoarder. They're the best bot chain in the business. And I'm sponsored by a store in Gamer Craze, which is in upstate New York. They are just an absolutely fantastic store with competitive buy prices that I have linked below. I think it might be their Crystal Commerce. It could be the Facebook page. They are working on fixing that website. So if you want to do that for me, that would be great. So I appreciate everybody being here this morning as well. I used to play Abzan. Yeah, we have a. Th this is why this deck is insane because it literally plays the Bloodbraid Elf game, not as well as Jun, but it can play the Bloodbraid Elf game, which fixes the deck, and then you can just switch the Omaha, play something different. I'm gonna cycle before fetching because I actually would not mind finding drawing a little land. I don't want to have to traverse for a land here because I'm going to assume that uh, this traverse is gonna need to be a threat. Okay, cycle. Uh, we're gonna cast that. Hang on one second. All right, so this goes and gets blood crypt. I'm just texting my wife, she's gone. Uh, yeah, so the first deck that I played in Modern was like Naya Zoo. Like the bigger version with Bloodbright Elf, which I actually want to play again at some point. Um, the bigger version with BBEs. Oh, okay. So the Retreat to Coral Helm is actually like a pretty decent value card here. So I think I'm going to take this Retreat and then I'm going to just... So I actually kind of want to play my Tarmogoyf next turn. I'm going to take the retreat. I think that's just the adult decision to do while we have this collector brutality. Yeah, I played uh, Naya Zoo, like the Brian, Kibler, the Brian Kibler big zoo deck for years. Probably like the first four or five years Modern was legal. And then when the Eldrazi got printed, I was just like, I can't. Like this deck does what my deck does, but it's just better at it. Which was kind of frustrating. All right, so we're going to hold that decay. Could have decayed there in order to turn Delirium on. Because we can't actually, without Delirium, we can't traverse for our land and play Tarmogoyf because we have our swamp, our forest. But the Eldrazi just invalidated it. And then I played Abzan for about a year. And I just got like super frustrated with the fact that you just could not beat so many decks. That's a good draw. So that so now we lay the landing for Blood Red Elf next turn. I think so. Because we're going to be, like, all of our, everything in our deck is a good hit, except for Traverse at this point. Because that's what he's going to play. Unless something goes, I mean, he can Ghost Quarter himself to put something in, that, in the battlefield if he wants to. And just having Bloodbright Elf come off the battlefield with this Tarmogoyf is going to be awesome. 
little ghost quarter action. We're gonna get some ghost quarter action. We're ghost quartering ourselves. If my opponent plays a Knight of the Reliquary, I might just abrupt K it because like if Knight of the Reliquary, if, if any, like, like you should just never let your opponents untap with Knight of the Reliquary. Yeah. I'm gonna be an adult and just deal with this. That's, now we can double spell, which makes everything feel a bit better. Probably gonna take the voice. Well, I actually might take the spell caller because if the spell caller takes my blood rail, that's pretty annoying. Well, there's two of them, so we're not doing that. We're taking this voice. Let's just hope they don't rip a blue source. No blue source. No blue source. Oh, that's a good one. That's a, that's a, they're not gonna. That's probably like the best hit in their deck. All right, spin it. Spin that wheel. Tilt. That's all right. It still draws us a card, which is gonna give us some interaction. I'm gonna crack in. Oh, my opponent just concedes. Okay. It's an awkward concession. What would I have bobbled into? An abrupt case. We could have dealt with that. All right. And that's like, that's the one, and even though that was still a not a bad hit, like, it still got us, uh, we just want all of our removal. It still gets us, um, gosh, what was I saying? It's not a super bad hit because it still gets us another card off the top, which is what this deck needs. This deck just needs velocity in the late game, something so it doesn't peter out. I just drew Dampening Spear. I just want to do your card is, yeah, I, li I like that card a lot. That card's going to help a lot out with... Um, it's going to help Fair decks out a lot against Tron. Like, you can still... They can still just, like, egg kill it. But the fact that you can finally interact with Con with Tron on the draw and not get turn three Karn unless they have a sideboard card is nice. Uh, I don't think we want Radiant Flames. I think I just want to be on, like, the Elves plan. And I think I'm just going to try to, like... Because this game's going to go long. I think I just want to... We're going to try grinding them out. I don't like Liliana the Veil against Mana decks and Voice of Resurgence decks, which is what both of those cards are in this deck. I could see bringing in some Brutalities or Teamer Battle Rages. And it might actually be right to play Teamer Battle Rage, even when we have the Blood Red Elves, because they're so good. Like, Teamer Battle Rage is likely to win me a game, so I think I'm just going to do this. Death and Taxes could main that. That seems aggressive. Um, I'm going to cut a discard spell. Like, this right here is a Nambo. But there's a chance that even if we draw it, it's just going to be so good that it's probably going to win us the game. Like, each one of these cards are just so good. They're important to our strategy. And I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know if this is, like, a legitimate thing this deck can do or not. We're going to give it a good old Teddy Whirlskis. Tron's gonna main deck two till Tron dies down likely. You can't main deck two of these because it's not, it's still like Tron is probably at most 8% of the format and uh, whatever it is, Storm is probably at most like 4% of the format. So you can't main deck two cards that are pretty much duds against 70, like I'll give them the benefit of the doubt say it's duds against 70% of the format. You can't main deck that here. I'm gonna bolt the shit out of a noble hierarchy here. That's the same thing. Um run a cycle. Okay. Land's not bad. Um, okay, yeah. So we're gonna get we're, our hand's really green, so I, I don't think it's gonna be too bad to have two green sources. Get out of my face. Four minute card is kind of out of hand. I'm more excited about down there than A25. I don't know. I think they're both sweet. Like getting, like reprints are great. I love reprints. Okay, so now we're kind of doing it. 
we're gonna we're gonna get on the life total preservation train here because we have to kill this i think though no we're just gonna play tarmogoyf like if my opponent wants to take some of their turn off shrinking my tarmogoyf then like and not impacting the board then like you do you fam Yes, there's going to be all kinds of good cards. Oh, we can get Spellcaller now? No, we can't. Bring it, man. Literally just going to Abrupt Decay this and then attack. Are we getting Path? You going to Path my Tarmogoyf? You going to Path me in my Bloodbraid Elf deck? You looking to die. I'd like to draw a Death Shadow. Because the Death Shadow lets me have a pretty efficient double spell turn here. Dope. We're gonna get rid of that before that gets a little too out of control. Or maybe there's an argument that I should have decayed my that scavenging was on my turn because I'm a little further off of delirium now. Get that company action. Voice. Vendillion click. Ooh, that sucks. This card seems pretty well positioned right now. Um, This card, like, this handles Jace, clicks Blood Red Elf. Like, I think this card's very well positioned. Yeah, we're just, we're dead as a doorknob. Okay. Okay. So, hot question. I think I want to bring my Liliana's in on the play, and I'm just going to cut these team of battle rages. And we're just going to try to be like, plus play, just play to the board. I don't think, I mean, like, so my opponent literally can't beat team of battle rage, but is it like magical Christmas land, or is like, are the battle rages? Are Battle Rages and Stubs better than Bloodbraid Elves and Coleon's Commands? You know what? I think I think they are. I think on the play, I think they're better. Because that also lets me go like this. So let's get all these into play. Let's cut these. Let's go with a good old Omaha. Sort by converted mana cost. I actually probably can even cut a land and bring one of these in because they're going to be path exiling me. Yeah. Probably don't need all four of these. Though if we hit, hitting companies is so good. Bring this back in on the play. Or maybe Brutality is better than that. Yeah, I'm going to go with Brutality is better than Inquisition. This is the switch, and I don't know. I don't know which one I should start. I don't know if I should try to go long with this deck, or I should try to just run them out of the gym. All right, this seems good. So this is going to get us Overgrown too. We're probably going to get a Stomping Ground. Just double green. That's the big question. When do you run people out of the gym, and when do you just try to end the game? God, I would love to set up this Radiant Flames. All right, well, this thing's going. They mulliganed to four. They put a card on top. I would like to be able to take that knight. Okay, so that's what they kept on top. Oh, no, they, they had all of them. Tarm Wife would be sweet. That's not time of life. Sad. All right. So my opponent plays a voice. We do nothing. That voice happens. We fetch. We are getting the deck dead. Yeah, I think I think that's a good good plan of action. Let me get this tapped. Jeez, crow. 
Gee, some crow. So if my opponent plays a knight here, I'm actually just going to push this voice of resurgence to the end of their turn, and then mop up the tokens and the knight with the sweeper. I'm bad pot, it's time. I think I think birthing pot is egregious. Okay. So I'm not gonna take this hit. Push that. Get your token. Your token's cute. Get probably a tap land, because I can go shock myself if I need to. We just don't have a Death Shadow. We don't really have a lot going on. I'd like to draw a Street Wraith so I could actually traverse this turn as well. Or a Bobble. Okay. Red. This isn't a great trade for us. But it's a trade that we will take on a mulligan. So let's do this right. Red. Black. Green. Probably leave this fetch land around here. It's gonna go get me watery grave more than likely. Yeah, P pod's egregious. Pod's like a pod's a, on a stick. It's like demonic tutor, and it's and it's uh it's like a mana. You're cheating mana with birthing pod. I'm gonna leave this in play. All right, not gonna leave it in play anymore. So now if they kill this. Which I doubt they're going to kill this. I think we wonder about their one of their last cards is like Path to Exile. I'm going to keep this Swamp in my hand in case I want to do something with Collective Brutality later in the game. And we're not—it's not like we're hard casting a Street Wraith anytime soon. Pride Mage. If my opponent attacks me. I'm going to let it happen. Then I'm just going to decay the Pride Mage. Well, I might actually just take a shot from the Pride Mage. Okay. That's an adult decision from our opponent. Okay. I think I'm still going to pass. We definitely need a Bobble or a Street Wraith. A Ratted, it's still too good. I don't know one. If, you, if Death Rite Shaman was a Defender and an 0 1. It would still be too good. All right, so we're on that Drago plan. All right. Incoming path to exile. Okay. No incoming path to exile. Sweet. My opponent's God. I can just beat. I can beat the tar out of my opponent that floods out. They just have no chance. I'm gonna bully, like, let, let it be known that Dylan Hovey is here to bully our opponents that draw poorly. It's what, this is what I do. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna pray to God that they don't have a way to kill this. And then we're just coming in hot next turn. I'm assuming they have, like, a collected company. And I actually can just go for the Battle Rage because even if they have a Spell Queller, yeah, we're just going to go for it. We beat Spell Queller. We're probably not beating Path to Exile at this game at all. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I mistapped. Don't Spell Queller me. Okay. I just, cry. I just tapped the wrong land on accident. We got lucky there. We got lucky. We got lucky, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we'll keep this. I'm probably this is the hand where we're probably traversing on one because we're going to be using our mana for basically the rest of the game, and we need to hit land drops. Yeah, so we're going to go stomping ground. And get a swamp. We gotta be on that double black train. We got some Lilianas to cast. We got some of my, my homegirls to take care of. 
It's a little like doing a lot in this deck with Kologon's Command is returning a Street Wraith. Just bringing Street Wraith back. Creeping Tar Pit. What a creepy play. What do you got? Fatal Push. Oh. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Fatal Push isn't doing anything. Let's take the Serum Visions. We're going to K Command a Spell Slayer Sprite and make them discard a card. No, that's stupid. That's stupid. This this K command is Blood Braid Elf written all over it. Let's make plays, Dylan. We can do this. Hit a click. That's annoying. The Dillion click, probably the worst draw for us. No spell savage by it. Oh, they don't have another land. Gas. Don't don't hit a land. God. The amount of tail is just unreal. Don't click me, bro. Nice. I'm gonna hold priority. Because I don't want to give my opponent priority back here. I'm just gonna hold priority. Cast this Blood Bright Elf. If I hit it, if I hit a um whatever the dumb card is. If I hit a, gosh, I can't think. If I hit a death, death shadow, then I will just cycle my street wraith with it still on the stack. No, tilt. So now they can actually click me and deal with this. They probably click themselves, honestly. They want to just get to this Jace. They should 100% click themselves. Yeah, they're targeting me. They're targeting me, which is, like, wrong, I think. I think that they should be targeting them to get to this Jace. <sighs> Joke's on them. Yeah, that was, that was dumb of them to do, in my opinion. Like this Jace is just better than it's it's better after this Blood Bread Elf hits the battlefield, the Jace is better than anything else I'm doing. So what am I doing in my life? Probably just holding up here. My opponent's more than likely gonna bring in a Oh, puppy's waking up. I don't want to take too much damage from this because my lightning bolt might get countered if I try to kill like a spell center or kill a creeping tarpit or something. And if my opponent plays a Jace, they have to tick it up and I can just bolt it and attack it with Death Shadow. Or attack it with, uh, all right. That's annoying. That is super annoying. I think I'm going to untap. I don't think I'm going to bolt this yet. Because I have Delirium and I could find a Traverse or another Blood Bright Elf. Or that. And that still means... Well, let me go. Let me cycle this. Yeah. Gas. Hey, buddy. Yes. Bye, Jace.
We have double spell sash by Dark Flick Show is okay. So I can actually go, go like this, face spell, stutter sprite, decay it with the trigger on the stack, get the second one, have this lightning bolt. Black, green. And now it's kind of like who top decks better, but my opponent's synergies are out of their deck. They, they, if they hit a Bitter Blossom, that's pretty good. Jace isn't that good. Liliana's pretty good. Liliana would be probably a better draw. Okay, Mutal Ball. I'm gonna, Mutal Ball's probably going to trade with my Bloodbraid Elf. Oh, yeah. We're totally going to kill this. We're going to kill this Creeping Tar Pit. Because I can block this Mutal Vault, I can't block the Creeping Tar Pit. Like, yes, my opponent my opponent can't even miss mind click me. Okay, sure. So we get both of their lands, which is fine. Then it turns off miss mind click, turns off Jace. It's okay. So we get two of them. Could have let it blocked. I didn't think about that. I should have. I should have. I'm disappointed in myself for not realizing they could have blocked there. I think I would have done the same thing. Like just double stone rain them. Yes. God, this deck draws so well. Like. Got an eye okay. So we're really afraid of a bitter blossom. Oh, there's, there's a Bloodbraid Elf. Okay, so I think we're on the full grind plan here. Like, we're bringing in K Command. We're bringing in Bloodbraid Elf. We're bringing in Golgari Charm. We're cutting Liliana the Veil. Probably cutting some of my spot removal. I'd much rather have a card like Collective Brutality, I think. Another deck building tension is I don't, I don't know when these are better than these. Because like in old Death Shadow decks, I would just sub I'd sideboard these. But because of this, I don't know. I just don't know. I know against like Hollowed One, I leave these in on the draw, but I sideboard these in on the play and I switch them. Because hitting that turn one inquiry is just so good. I like Brutality better than Fatal Push because it helps swing races, even though it leaves me a little wide open to get wrecked by a spell stutter sprite but being able to like nug them and gain drain is good nug them while dealing with like a bitter blossom token is good so i think this is what we're gonna do i don't want i think i want blood ray elves in my deck mn's mbg and we 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 have so this league i'm probably like a little tainted by my previous experience in the modern format in that like i thought radiant flames was the absolute stones against humans and it's just not like it's not that good against most other things and i really haven't played a lot of humans this is a thought season i'm gonna cycle my street race i think okay so like that could be it could be we could have a deck building error here but i don't know like there aren't that many matchups where i want like a clunky four drop and sweepers i think okay so we're definitely just looking for a discard spell because I took my discard spell. Um, go with that. G charm. Almost a turn one shadow. Golgari charm's good. It's a good one for them not to know about. Oh, my Tarmor is to get huge in this matchup. Play your bitter blossom. Okay. I'm actually gonna get this tapped. They are, they are like a little bit of a beatdown deck. We can get our Death Shadow into play whenever we want. Like our Death Shadow does have the ability to be huge. Blood Crypt. I've been really happy with this Golgari Chan.
Yeah, so like, there's like three sweepers that I'm interested in playing. I'm interested in playing Kozilek's Return, Radiant Flames, and Anger of the Gods. I think Anger, I would need to add a Mountain to the deck in order to make work. And um, I'm just not super sure I'm about that life. And Kozilek's Return is pretty bad against humans. Okay. Um... Ditch the elf. That's gas. We're gonna play two creatures out though. Traverse for Death Shadow. And we're definitely ditching this Tarmogoyf because we can bring it back if we need to. You just play this, like this this deck is awesome. This deck is so good now. It has got Blood Red Elf. Like, I'm ranting and raving about this deck, and I'm obviously biased because I enjoy playing it, but it's just so good. If he goes, like, Edict Bounce, I might cry. But if he does play a Jace, then we're going to get cut off red here, which is tilting. Tilt Town USA, Population Dylan. Um, probably just get a Swamp so we don't get cut off double black. Okay, so now we're in now we're in trouble. Now we are in trouble. I mean at least we have a 7-8. They're gonna like hopefully this trades. Like one time trade. You develop not gonna trade. And here's the big boy. Discard. I'm gonna discard this command, because they're probably gonna bounce this and then. Hopefully I can hit a land to cast Blood Red Elf. Tilt. Um, yeah, we just got dicked. And that was my fault. I wasn't I wasn't thinking about a field of ruin from their deck and I didn't get double red. Now we're just getting wrecked. So, Gogarge. Yeah, I mean I'm a big I'm a big G Charm fan. So you know we're getting a little fate ceiling. Put a card on top of my library. I hope it was a land. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He left a Tarn on top, so now he just bounces it, ticks up. I really need a land. If I get a land, gross. That doesn't really matter, I guess. Land and we're in it. Because he probably bounces. He's got to bounce this. Or he should, he should actually crack this first. Cuts off Traverse. Tarmogoyf's still 6-7. Bloodbraid Elf, come on. God, if we go Bloodbraid Elf into K Command... But I guess he can just go, like, even if he has a Bloodbraid Elf, like, even if we do Bloodbraid Elf, he just holds up this Mutal Vault. Liliana. Gas. Creeping Tar Pit. Alright. Land. They got it. And that was my fault. I didn't think, I didn't play around Field of Ruin. And that's what I should have done. And that's what we will do in this next game. Um... Yeah, I think I like the sideboard even more now. Maybe I want more Golgari charms. But, like, I'm just so scared of the human's deck still. I think the human's deck's very good still. Alright, this hand's good. Pupper is still asleep. He's just out like a rock. It's, dude, it's tough to, it's tough to be Philly. We don't want that garbage. This gets a blood crypt. Is that turn one delirium? Moto's getting a little laggy for me. Yeah, we're just gonna take Chase. We can deal with the push. 
right, so next turn we'll push. I could have taken the spell bomb, but like, I mean, about that life. Opponent rips fatal push for the punishment. And he ripped a mute vault. He's got a field of ruin. Okay. That's a like an excellent draw. So this gets rid of the fatal push. Now we fetch a basic. Get our Garmatoif in play. We are at a bit of a precarious life total. Probably still going to be a 3-4 after he exiles. This Creeping Tarpet's going to get... These, these, those two Creeping Tarpets, these are going to get annoying as AF during this game. We just need to keep our opponent on the back foot. Watery Grave, don't shock. This means the Liliana's coming down, which means we're going to have to bolt the Liliana, which is just like... Which means I can't deal with the Creeping Tarpets. Um, so I actually know their hand. I'm going to leave this card in play. Leave this one more time. Hopefully they discard something that matters because this Inquisition is useless. And I could draw like a Blood Great Elf and deal with this. I think I would rather kill a Creeping Tarpet than this Liliana though. Because I'm about to be Hellbent and I have more ways to deal with this on the top of my deck. Yeah, I'm just going to kill this. If we get a Blood Bright Elf, we're in business. Because we easily, we probably just kill this. And... Feel the ruin. Bitter Blossom. Now we're in deep shit. I think we're dead, chat. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. With Thalia, that's why I was like a huge, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I like, uh, you play Screaming Dark Pit. Edicts, Fatal Push. We dead, chat. Yeah, all right. When three and two, when two and three that league, that's the first league in a while on cash, which is sad. But let's go look at the, let's get back here, look at the deck. Things that I am interested in. Basic Mountain. Maybe Anger of the Gods if I play Basic Mountain. Because we played against two decks there where we might want Sweepers and Blood Red Elf. Um, and then I would have to just figure out if I want to start the Stubborn Denials and the Battle Rages or start like the K Commands and the Blood Red Elves. I don't know. I also moved a one last hope to the main deck over a veil, and I don't know if I want to do that or not. Moving forward, like I, I added, like it was—it wasn't the sideboard. Basically, my deck was like this. Then add one more of these. This is the switch that I made. I don't know if I like that or not. Cause I'm, I'm a huge Liliana the Veil fan, but I don't know. I do not know. I'm actually going to do a big stream next Saturday because it's my birthday. It's a year that I've been streaming as well, so. Probably gonna play some standard. Might play some legacy. I don't know. Definitely gonna play modern. Do a little bit of everything. But yeah, so this is a uh, this is what I really like this deck. I think this deck is very good. I think a lot of people are sleeping on this because they like to play Jund, you know, and like they don't understand. Like they're missing out on like this deck can play the Jund game. We can BB into all of our crap here that's insane, and we can just battle rage bullshit out of the format. Like, I, I wholeheartedly believe, and, like, this is going to sound, like, bad, but, like, Jund cannot beat a deck that leylines it. A combo deck that leylines Jund, Jund's most likely going to lose. They, they automatically become, like, 20% to win that game. 
If this deck gets leylined after sideboard, it's got battle rages and stubs. You can interact quickly and kill them. So, like, it's just, I think you can play, I think this deck can play the Jun game, and then they also can play the Death Shadow game, which is, which inherently makes the deck busted, I think. So, but anyways, I hope everyone had a really good rest of their, was a good rest of their day. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. And if not, you know, I appreciate y'all just being here. So, see you guys later.